KTN News. Get the whole story. Six years ago, a bouncing, healthy baby girl was born, and they named her Rose, not her real name. Rose, who is currently a counselor with NACADA after completing her studies at Kenyatta National University, found herself in a quagmire when she abruptly fell sick and lost her eyesight while in her final year. Um, before losing the vision, uh, compared to now, it's, it was much easier especially when it comes to my academics. I am someone who loved my books. So um, the vision loss is not just instant. Like uh, it happened in 2009, but it was in 2009 August, but by 2009 around um, uh, say May, June there, I was already experiencing a vision loss. I was already experiencing like blood vision, so it was it deteriorated, and uh, so I was um, I was losing the inability to read slowly. I was losing the inability the, the ability sorry to move around slowly. I was losing the ability just to be independent slowly, and uh, it was basically very traumatizing uh, to the point that uh, when I finally lost the sight I was way traumatized that I don't I honestly don't even remember what happened I just know I was admitted and I got out of the hospital not seeing her life took a turning point she was forced to take a break from school as she figures out her next move driven by her passion for books the ardent reader resumed school after acclimatizing with her new way of life, pursuing masters in gender and development studies. I'm currently writing my thesis on uh, uh, the effectiveness of... Uh, I chose to specify KU, so the effectiveness of uh, our university's sexual and gender-based violence uh, policy on um, eradicating sexual harassment amongst the female students with disability. As a person with disability, the environment was already too fast for Rose. She had to learn the use of technology such as Braille to continue with her studies, a challenge she overcame and adapted so fast, only for her to experience sexual harassment. Initially, I never even thought of sexual harassment as a form of violence until I went through it. and. Um, the word is harassment and it's for real it's true when you go through it it is you feel harassed you feel like you you you're in a place you cannot defend yourself you feel like you, you, you you're in danger and you don't know what to do about it so um i have experienced it in different ways but the major way that i would talk of is uh, uh like i will give an example of my experience one morning while Rose was taking a shower before her morning classes, Rose was harassed. Uh, there is a hostel that we have that majorly um, is, 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 uh, is adapted to accommodate uh, to female students with disability. I was in my room, it's just next to the washroom, perfect. And uh, one morning I decided to go use the washroom early so that I go for my classes. I had a morning class that day. So I went to the hostel, to the washroom very early, around 6 a.m. I didn't know that people are usually not around that time. So I, there was a lady at the sinks where you brush your teeth. There's a place where you brush your teeth and you proceed to uh, the washrooms, like the bathroom and the loads. So um, they have a specific washroom for students with disability, which is adapted so that you use it easily. So I was just on my way there, but when I reached the place, uh, the door was locked. We usually have a door. So the door was locked. I knocked, asking whoever is in there if they will be taking long so that I know if I should just go back to the room, I do other things and come back. 
but the person was not talking, which is very strange because students with disability in that hostel are usually friendly with each other. You actually usually know who is in the washroom and who is going to be coming next. So it was very strange when this person was not talking. I knocked there for some time and realized this person is just wasting my time. Let me go back. Uh, oh no, let me use the other washrooms. But the other washrooms are... We don't have uh, wooden doors. The other washrooms have curtains. So I just uh, managed to enter. The, the ones with curtains are very small and not easy to use and you're not used to them. So just manage because you have to go to class. So I went into the washroom and I was showering. And uh, in the process of showering, um, I was just, you know, using... I just, <laughs> someone just come, came and tapped me while I was you know inside and I, I i i couldn't rush out because you can hurt yourself so i started screaming who is that who's that thing trying to play games with me right now which kind of a game is this actually that's what i was saying and then uh at the side where there were sinks the lady who was there was now screaming now she was screaming i do not know her and i was asking her what's going on she couldn't talk she just uh, kept screaming boy it's a boy it's a boy the person was touching you where were uh... they touching you uh my back my back <laughs> her efforts to report to different authorities was futile so, so far that has not been dealt with up to now. Uh, the question they would ask you would tell you there's nothing that's going to happen. So for me, I was being asked. I was asked by the security, I was asked by the housekeeper, I was asked by the student leaders. How did that person look like? What were they wearing? Uh, asking me this, they're saying that they're asking me this so that they can be able to trace uh, the person. Now, I kept telling them, that, how do you expect me to know how this per person looks like? Speaking during the launch of the University of Nairobi Gender Desk, Anna Mbati, the UN Women Country Representative, acknowledged the need to have Gender Desk where students can voice their ordeal on gender-based violence. It's also important uh, from a gender-based violence perspective uh, to engage because we are aware of the different forms of violence that especially young women are going through. Uh, sexual harassment um, at university, the issues of sex for marks, the issues of violence at the hands of their um, um, uh, partners and so on, which goes unreported and unpunished. So by engaging with them today, we also want to make sure that we make institutions of higher learning safer for young people especially. The study shows that prevalent age bracket of persons accused of sexual gender-based violence is between 20 to 24 years old, with total victims of sexual gender-based violence reported at 8,149, where 648 are male and 7,465 female. According to National Police Service data on sexual and gender-based violence in 2021, persons accused of sexual gender-based violence crime are 7,437. Among them are 6,965 male, 467 female. According to National Police Service, prevalent age bracket of sexual gender-based violence victims are aged 15 to 17 years. With reported offenses against morality in 2021, total cases at 8,182, with defilement at 6,366, rape cases at 941, 330 cases of incest, and 306 indecent assault among others. President William Ruto on 1st of December held a discussion with court boss Francis Atuoli touching on Kenya's ratification of the International Labour Organization Violence and Harassment Convention. That the government of Kenya is going to ratify the ILO uh, Convention number 190 of 2021 on the elimination of harassment and violence against women and all other forms of gender-based uh, violence. And my commitment as the government of Kenya is going to work with the ILO uh, fraternity and all workers to make sure that we secure the place of our women, our girls, and the people in the whole of that space. 
the issues of gender-based violence does not start and stop in Kenya. I followed up the interview with head of office of the Italian Agency for Development Cooperation, Mr. Giovanni Grandi, to talk about how far is Kenya as a developing country on that scoreboard compared with other international partners, and this is how it went. Every year, the world marks 16 days of activism. Mr. Giovanni, in your opinion, do you think there's a need to review commitments to end or reduce gender-based violence in Kenya? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, since decades, the international community has been setting very bold commitments uh, to end GBV. Just to give you some data, 1995, the Beijing Declaration for Platform Action, 2019, the International Conference on Population and Development, here in Nairobi, by the way, during which the former president, Kenyatta, reiterated his commitment to end GBV. 2021, the Generation Equality Forum, and last but not least, the SDG 5 of the Agenda 2030 of the UN. The government of Kenya, in 2021, lined out a very ambitious roadmap in, for advancing gender equality and ending all forms of gender-based violence and female genital mutilation by 2026. The brief states out clearly the goal and the steps towards the, re the realization, and it is thus not a matter of commitment or renewing commitment, it's a question of action and implementing what already has been committed. In my opinion, the most urgent challenge lies on resources allocation, which is key to promote gender equality and women empowerment and prevent discrimination and violence against women and girls. The general lack of resources is not only a challenge for Kenya, to be honest, but is a common problem worldwide. How far is Kenya as a developing country on that scoreboard compared to other international partners? Well, despite the numerous challenges, Kenya has made great improvements over the last years. For instance, the national prevalence of female genital mutilation which was a practice which had a very high rate, is declining constantly over time. Uh, in the last Democratic uh, Health Survey statistic, uh, it went down at 21% from 32% in 2008 and 27% in 2018. What progress do you think has been made when it comes to the fight against gender-based violence in Kenya? Well, the, uh, as mentioned in 2021, Kenya made 12 concrete commitments at uh, the Generation Equality Forum I just mentioned. And one of those was to uh, terminate and end by 2026 the uh, GBV and uh, FGM in Kenya. Uh, other examples of the progress is made towards fighting GBV are related to the general elections held in August 2022. Uh, election cycles often uh, spells potential conflicts with women and children amongst those that are more affected. Yet, not only one, only one sexual and gender-based violence uh, case was reported to the police during the last Kenyan elections. And this is, a, I think, a, a great proof of, uh, of improvement that has been made compared to um, the previous elections. We all know that historically in Kenya, during the election period, uh, violence against women uh, uh, was one of the major issues. Uh, now, I would also add that, uh, uh, that in uh, um, 2022, very recently, uh, there has been a case that has been reported 
uh, where uh, considering the election period of 2017, um, the, uh, a police officer has been uh, convicted and uh, accused and uh, condemned uh, for the gender-based violence that was uh, done during that, that peri peri electoral period. So this is another proof that uh, things uh, uh, are definitely improving. Uh, we have been, uh, as uh, Italian Agency for Development Cooperation, supporting, uh, supporting uh, both UN Women and uh, OHCHR since 2019 expressly uh, in supporting them during the electoral period um, to uh, reduce the violence against women. And uh, the fact that uh, uh, the results on the last general election is what I told you. And also the fact that a judge has condemned a police officer for what has happened in 2017 proves that uh, effectively, uh, I mean, our bilateral initiative has been uh, very instrumental to get to the results we're getting to. What is the role of the Italian cooperation in the scenario of international partners to contrast gender-based violence globally and in Kenya? We add that uh, not only that we have been supporting, uh, as I said, UN agencies uh, in this process, but we, um, we are also continuing our support. Uh, we have in our programming uh, initiatives that will start in 2020, I don't know if by year end, but let's say 2023, uh, continuing to support uh, gender-based violence and uh, gender equality. This is definitely one of our uh, missions. Uh, as development cooperation, uh, we have an agenda which is uh, linked to human development more than the economic agenda. And, uh, and therefore, uh, we are continuing to support uh, the gender equality, which is one of the themes that they, uh, are within our mission. What are some of the lessons you've learned in fight against gender-based violence in Kenya? Well, I think that uh, generally speaking, as I said, uh, we, we are strengthening, strengthening our partnership with our partners, international partners, uh, exactly towards the support in uh, reducing GBV uh, and hopefully allowing the, the government of Kenya to meet the uh, the commitment he has made uh, for 2026. Let's talk about your experience on the status of gender-based violence in other countries you have worked in. Uh, this is interesting because my previous experience was in Afghanistan. So just telling you Afghanistan, I think you can imagine how much the effort uh, the Italian government and all, I would say all the development partners, but especially Italy has made uh, in Afghanistan in order to reduce and eliminate uh, discrimination. Uh, now, we've been there for 20 years. And uh, honestly speaking, during these 20 years, we have totally changed the lives of women, uh, allowing them to access school instruction, uh, allowing them to become judges, so uh, intervening on the jurisdictional uh, constitution of, uh, of, of Afghanistan. Uh, it is sad to say that uh, unfortunately, and I was actually there in August uh, 2021, when the Taliban has taken over again the power and uh, we were forced to evacuate. So uh, it is uh, a sad end, but I am sure that uh, the 20 years we spent in Afghanistan, uh, not only uh, towards uh, uh, the change of life of women, but certainly uh, has left a very considerable seed in the mentality of people. And it is exactly what is happening. Uh, 
the Taliban who came back into power basically have uh, found a, a country which is completely different from what they left because the 20 years we have been there has changed the life of people. So okay. this is, I think, my, my previous experience and uh, on gender, I believe, honestly speaking, we've been doing uh, a lot. Uh, Italy, it is one of the, our priorities, uh, not only in Kenya. Kenya is definitely one of our priority countries in development cooperation, but every place where we are working in development countries, gender equality is definitely one of the, not only a cross-cutting issue that we have on all of our initiatives, but is, it, it, is a, it is a sectorial activity. Uh, by itself, because it has a dignity to be uh, an activity on its own. The convention, which was adopted in June 2019, is the first international treaty to recognize the right of everyone to a world of work free from violence and harassment, including gender based violence and harassment for victims like. <laughs> KTN News. Get the whole story.